afternoon, Feast Ortigas. I have a question for you. Ask me what? Do you ever feel like you're a loser sometimes? Do you ever feel like you need people's approval or people's opinion to make you feel better? I have a message for you. You are a friend of God. If people calls you loser, God calls you beloved because He is your friend. So let's sing this song as we declare that we are a friend of God. Let's sing, who am I? Who am I that you are mindful of me? That you hear me when I call Is it true that you are thinking of me? How you love me It's amazing See it up I am a friend of God and for once again reminding us that God is not just our King, He's not just our Savior, He's not just our Redeemer, but God is also our friend. He calls us His friend and in these times of uncertainty, it's, it's very much comforting to hear that message that, that as God's friend, His love is with us and He will never leave us. Friends, welcome to the feast, welcome to the happiest place on earth where we're gathering together, not 
physically, but we're gathering together online because we still would want to continue to proclaim God's word. We still would want to continue to worship the Lord and we still would want to continue to, to worship Him, to, to share Him into this world. Friends, amidst all the situation that is happening now in your situation, this is my prayer that we still continue to see the good in 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 all of this. Alam ko maraming nagkakalat na hindi magagandang balita. We are surrounded with, with a lot of negativities, negative news, fake news perhaps, or we're, we're, we're surrounded with what's missing, with, with what is lacking. Ang daming mga sinasabi na pwede mangyari ganito, ganyan. But today, this is my prayer that amidst all this situation, we still see God, that we will focus on God. Because when we look at God, when we see God, we will see the beauty in all of what He has done. Friends, God did not do this situation, but God can turn the situation around so that we can still see the good, see the beauty in all these things. Kaya ikaw COVID-19, di ba? Pag titignan mo yung COVID-19, iniisip mo, ang sama ng COVID-19. Grabe, binago niya ang buhay natin. Marami siyang binago sa isang iglap. Pero kung titignan mo, hindi ba sa mga oras, sa mga panahon na ngayon, marami ang nagbabalik loob sa Diyos. Marami ang nananalangin sa Diyos. Marami ang bumabalik sa Kanya sa panahon ng krisis na ito. Hindi ba sa mga panahon na ito, naka-home quarantine ka, na naka nagsasama-sama ang mga pamilya. For, for the longest time, hindi na kayo nagkakasama ng pamilya mo kumain. Hindi na kayo nagsasama sa isang lamesa para mag- magkatipon-tipon. But, but because of this situation, we are forced to, to be together. Isn't that a blessing? Hindi ba yung marami mga bata na labyerda ng lierda, kalat, uh, pasyal ng pasyal sa mga, di ba? Pero ngayon, ngayon pa na ito, nandiyan sila sa bahay nila. They, they are able to spend time with family, with, with, with their brothers, their sisters, their parents. Di ba? Madalas, alam mo, yung ngayon Marami, mas marami nang nagkakamustahan. All of a sudden, people are reaching out to each other, relatives, friends, malayo man o malapit man. Why? Because because that goodness in us starts to, to come out. Hindi ba maraming may mga bisyo ang tumigil muna sa bisyo nila? Alak, sigarilyo, at kung ano pa. Di ba? Hindi ba maraming mas pinipili, mas maging, mas maging healthy, choosing healthy ways to, 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 to live their lives to combat COVID-19? Nabawasan din ang pollution. Bakit? Marami ng sasakyan ang hindi lumalabas. Maraming mga jeeps, smoke belchers, truck ang hindi lumalabas. Kaya ngayon, pag titignan mo, ang linis-linis ng hangin natin. Or, di ba, maraming mga tao ang na-force maglakad dahil walang sasakyan. Kaya umaga, tanghali pa lang, 10,000 steps na. Di ba? Hindi ba mas maganda yun sa katawan natin? Or, di ba, marami man ang natatakot, pero di ba mas marami ang na-realize nila na mas kailangan nila maging malusog para labanan ang COVID-19. Marami nang mas kumakain ng gulay, ng prutas, marami nang mga nag e at nagpapalakas ng katawan. Kaya kung titignan mo, oo nga no, ang dami hindi magandang nangyayari sa, sa sitwasyon ng COVID-19, but we can still choose to see the blessing in all these things. We can still choose to change our perception of, of our situation. But but this is the truth. This is what I believe in. Whatever situation we are in, God can turn them around. So, so as God turns them around, let us focus on the good things. Let us focus on His love and His blessing for us. Friends, in the middle of this situation, when there is a lot of uncertainty, when there is a lack, when there is a lot of news roaming around, Hindi lang bad news, fake news kasama na. Diba? In all of this situation, can you still choose to see the good? And that is my prayer. That we will all choose to see the good in our current situation. That we will not focus on, on the negative things, but we will focus on God alone. We will focus on Jesus so that we see His blessing amidst us. As we put our trust, as we surrender to the one who is only certain, the one that is certain in these times, and that is Jesus. Jesus is our refuge. Friends, our victorious King, who is our Lord, who is our Savior, He is our friend, will lead us through this situation. Friends, welcome to the feast. I know to, to all of you, I just want to say hi to all of you who is watching us through Facebook.com, FOG Sunday. Again, nothing. I say nothing, I declare that nothing can stop us from coming together as one family, as one church to proclaim God's word. Today, we start with a brand new series. It's entitled, Best Preaching Ever. And whose preaching is that? Last week, we said that Jesus started with his preaching ministry. Remember that? And we will continue to study the word. We will continue to dive deeper into the book of Matthew. We will dive deeper into his word and we will learn from the best preacher 
himself Jesus Christ. In the next two weeks, in the next two talks, we'll be talking about the Sermon of the Mount. We'll be reading Matthew 5, 6, and 7, and that contains the Sermon of the Mount. We will dive deeper and learn from this beautiful, powerful message of Jesus. Yet, this message is very radical. Why am I saying that? Later on, you'll find out. So, so today, let me ask you, are you ready to be blessed? And as you are blessed, my next question is this. Are you ready to share God's blessing? As, as you are watching us, I encourage you, call on your family. Nasa bahay ka na ngayon, di ba? Call on your family. Call on your, yung mga kapatid mo, yung kamag-anak mo, sino kayo sa bahay. Kung hindi mo sila madala sa feast, ito na ang pagkakataon. Dalin mo ang feast sa bahay niyo. If, if you're watching from your phone, if you're watching from your, your laptops, watching through Facebook, there's a button there. Watch party. Start your own watch parties and together, let's proclaim and let's glorify and give glory to our one true God. Are you ready? If you are ready, let's come before the Lord. Let's pray and declare this prayer that, that tells us we're not just the friends of God, but we are His champions. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's pray. Today, I receive all of God's love for me. Today, I open myself to the unbounded, limitless, overflowing abundance of God's universe. Today, I open myself to God's blessings, healing, and miracles. Today, I open myself to God's Word so that I would become more like Jesus every day. Today, I proclaim that I'm God's beloved. I am God's servant. I am God's powerful champion. And because I am blessed, I am blessing the world. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's honor the Word of God. The Word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Today we'll be reading Matthew 5 verses 1 to 12. And, and the Sermon of the Mount, as we call it, starts with the Beatitudes. I just need to warn you, if you're familiar with the Beatitudes in these next two talks, in these next two weeks that we dive deeper into the Word, it might just change your perspective. It might just change your understanding about the Word. That the Beatitudes, they're so rich, they're so profound that, that we'll need to take time to really digest it and, and get whatever spiritual treasure that it has for us. So, so if you're ready, allow me to read to you Matthew 5 verses 1 to 12. The Sermon on the Mount One day, as he saw the crowds gathering, Jesus went up on the mountain and sat down. His disciples gathered around him and he began to teach them. The Beatitudes God blesses those who are poor and realize their need for him, for the kingdom of heaven is theirs. God blesses those who mourn, for they will be comforted. God blesses those who are humble, for they will inherit the whole earth. God blesses those who hunger and thirst for justice, for they will be satisfied. God blesses those who are merciful, for they will be shown mercy. God blesses those whose hearts are pure, for they will see God. God blesses those who work for peace, for they will be called the children of God. God blesses those who are persecuted for doing right, for the kingdom of heaven is theirs. God blesses you when people mock you and persecute you and lie about you and say all sorts of evil things against you because you are my followers. Be happy about it. Be very glad about it for a great reward awaits you in heaven. And remember, the ancient prophets were persecuted in the same way. Grabe, no? So, 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 so profound, so deep. Pag pagbabasahin mo, God blesses, and then, ang kasunod, it's a negative description, di ba? But, but I guess that's where the message of, of God is, that in, in, in negative things, even in the negative things that's happening around us, there is a blessing. Friends, today, I would like to preach on this powerful message that says, use God's measuring stick. In, in our world today, God measures differently from how the world measures everything. Today, I have with me ito. Anong tawag dito? This is a measuring stick. Diba? This is used to, to measure. It can measure length. It can measure width. 
A lot of people, di ba, yung mga karpentero, yung mga gumagawa, ginagawa, ginagamit na nila ito para ipang sukat ng mga bagay. And then in today's world, we also have our own measure. How how do we measure perhaps success, di ba? Sometimes we measure success. If, if not, sometimes, most of the times we measure success by by the material things, the possessions that we have. Diba? We, we, we feel and we think that we are successful kapag yung dream house mo, yung dream car mo, yung dream business mo, yung, yung, yung bank account mo. Success is measured by the number of zeros that you have in your bank account or the number of investments that you have. The world oftentimes measures success this way. Or, or greatness. How do we measure greatness? The world measures greatness by by your achievements. Diba? Ilan ang medalya mo? ilan ang award mo, ilan ang diploma mo, ilan ang distinctions mo. What have you accomplished? You will be considered successful, you will be considered great if you have accomplished all of these things. Or perhaps love. How does the, the world measure love? Diba? Do you measure love based on does that person make you smile? Does that person make you happy? Pinakikilig ka ba niya? But again, friends, if we have our way of measuring all these things, God sees differently. God's measuring stick is very different from our measure. Success, greatness, and love is measured by the sacrifice that one is willing to give, that one is willing to take. By the capacity of our hearts, by the capacity of your heart to give, to love, to sacrifice. In the same way, Jesus sacrificed on the cross for our salvation. Friends, this is the truth. The only one who truly loves is the one that, that diba? hindi yung taong nagbibigay. It's not the person who receives the most. The one who truly loves is not the person who receives the most, but the one who gives the most, the one who can sacrifice the most. Friends, as we study God's words today, may we not just listen with our hearts, May we not just listen with, with our ears. May we listen from the very core of our hearts so that His Word will, will, will pierce through our hearts and His Word becomes the lives that we live. Father, we, we come to You. Lord, we, we surrender to You everything. Lord, we, we know that we are unqualified. Lord, we are broken before You. We, we admit to You our brokenness. Lord, we admit to You our woundedness. But because of your great love, but because of your great mercy, you have qualified the unqualified. You have healed the, the, the sick. You have restored the broken. You have healed the wounded. Fre- Father, we, we come to you. We know, Lord Jesus, that, that you have chosen us, that you have blessed us. Jesus, thank you for making us part of your kingdom. For, for choosing us to be part of your kingdom. And this is our prayer, that, that in your kingdom, O Lord God, we become inclusive, that we don't measure, we don't measure based on our own metrics, Lord God, but we measure based on how you measure us. And that is your love. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Friends, are you ready to, to dive deeper into God's word? Because if you're ready, I want to call on somebody who will preach to you today. That the word of Jesus, you know him, he's our brother, and he's our friend. Let's all welcome Brother Mon Asprey. All right. Hello, brothers and sisters. Thank you for joining us today. I'm coming to you live from a pre-recorded video message. And just like in any live feed session, nag-prepare talaga ako para sa inyo. Siyempre naman, kita nyo. Naligo ako. Kahapon, nagsuot ako ngayon ng maganda, ready to serve you. So, kung ready na kayo, let me just fix something and we'll get started. Okay. Okay. Alright. Let's do this. So, I hope you're ready to receive God's message for you today. Ang main theme ng talk ko para sa inyo is You are God's VIP. Pakiulit nga po ulit. Grabe siguro yun, no? Kapag may nadinig akong sumagot sa inyo, kasi nga po, mag-isa lang po ako ngayon dito sa room. Well, actually, may audience naman ako. Kilala nyo ba si Buzz Lightyear, si Baymax, at saka si Spidey? Abangan nyo po, papalakpak po sila mamaya. Yes po, kami lang po ngayon ang magkakasama ngayon dahil sa quarantine because of COVID-19. And if you're only 
learning about COVID-19 today. Sa ang bato ka nakatalo. I'm pretty sure everybody knows about this coronavirus thing. But come to think of it, meron pa nga kayang mga taong hindi nakakalam nito. I think there is. Like my three-year-old son. He is upstairs asleep and has no clue about the virus. Ang alam lang niya, ang tagal na ni daddy na hindi pumapasok sa office. Yay! Alam nyo, okay naman yung work from home setup. Ang pinaka-struggle ko lang talaga. Maligo. Hindi ko alam ano. Parang may force field sa banyo para sa akin. Pero, sabi ko naman sa'yo, nag-prepare ako for today. Naligo ako kahapon. So, bago mag... Just in case, maamoy niyo ako sa screen. Anyway, going back to our main message, you are God's VIP. I will prove it to you. You are God's VIP. Later, I will prove it to you. You know, what's worse than this coronavirus pandemic? This is one of the worst epidemics that is plaguing the world today. Sabi nga ni Simon Sinek, no one idol ko to eh. He's one of the the planet's top leadership experts. We have an entire generation growing up with low self-esteem. And you know what? There's a variety of factors that contribute to this from parenting, from uh, school systems, social media. I mean, I don't know if you've noticed Bakit parang naging trending ang pagiging depressed? I mean, what happened to our world that so many people think that nobody loves them? Why do so many people think that nobody cares for them? What happened? Why do people think that they are not worthy of receiving the best in life? How can so many people think that they are not special? I mean, come on, Christians! This is our job description. We're here to love people. We have to do our job. And if you're wa- watching this and you're feeling this way, you're one of them. You're one of them who feel down, who feel depressed, who think that nobody cares for you. I want you to stop those thoughts right now and listen to me. Because I'm going to prove to you that you deserve only the best. Gusto nyo bayon? Game. Big message, you're God's VIP. Here's the proof. Familiar ba kayo sa Beatitudes? Ayan. Yung Bible verse natin na binasa ni Brother Joel, that's where I'll prove to you that you are so much more special than you think. The Beatitudes, rooted from the Latin, rooted from Latin, means blessings. Okay? Simple lang naman siya, di ba? And if you read the Beatitudes, parang madali lang din naman siya intindihin. If you read it, para silang mga guidelines on how to live the right way. Para ba silang mga ethical standards? Pero yun nga ba sila? It's like they're this upgraded version of the Ten Commandments. Pero ngayon, since nine na lang sila, di ba? Tapos, version pa to ni Jesus. God wants us to be poor in spirit, to be me, to be to hunger for righteousness, to be merciful, to be pure in heart, to be a peacemaker. And there are even books that agree with this line of thought. For a lot of people, the beatitudes are be attitudes, okay? Be attitudes. Attitudes on how we should be, on how we should live. And if you want to be blessed, sabi don, do these nine things. But if you take a closer look at them, Parang mapapansin nyo, yung ibang lines doon, yung ibang items doon, parang hindi siya mag-fit as guidelines. Kasi if the Beatitudes are the nine commandments of Jesus on how to live a happy life, there are four commandments there that don't seem to fit. First, Beatitude pa lang. Parang hindi na siya fit as an ethical standard. Ano ba sabi doon? When Jesus said, poor in spirit, what did he mean? Especially when you take a, take a look at Luke's version. Take a look at Luke's version. <laughs> Kasi nandun din yung Beatitudes. In Luke, Jesus simply said, Blessed are the poor, period. Being poor is not an ethical standard. Do you believe that God wants you to be poor? 
Kasi kung ganun, eh, ayayayin ko na kayo mag-resign sa mga trabaho niyo tapos sabay-sabay tayo maglimos sa kalsada. Ganun ba yun? Is that what God wants for us? Let's look at beatitude number two. Medyo problematic din yun. Ano ba sabi ni Lord doon? Blessed are those who mourn. Ito ata yun eh. Baka dito kumukuha ng inspiration ang mga depressed. I have to mourn so that I will be blessed. Ganun ba? And if you think about it, maraming taong ganito. Eh, kahit Easter Sunday na, Biernes Santo pa rin ang itsura nila. You know, I'm just trying to make this lighter, but I know that depression is a serious thing. And I think it's contagious. Negativity is contagious. But you know what? So is positivity. Do you know what can change your state from a negative to a positive one? The power of choice. If you choose to focus on your blessings, you will change your state. I'll give you an example. We all know that there's a lot of negativity going around because of this coronavirus. Question for you, specifically for you. What's the best thing about this situation? What's the best thing that happened because of the virus, the quarantine, the lockdowns? If you really think about it, I know you can come up with a lot of things. Maybe you get to slow down. Maybe you get some more quiet time. Maybe you get to catch up with family. Maybe you get to catch up on reading books. I'm sure marami pa. And just thinking about it, doesn't it make you feel better already? I hope it does. Changing states is simple, maybe not so easy. And I understand, lalo kapag deep in that in negative emotion ka na, no? But it is possible. You just need to change your focus. So keep yourself in a positive state and we'll move on. Oh, by the way, speaking of quarantine, I received some very alarming statistics. Ha? This was as of 7 a.m. yesterday. Hindi ko lang alam today, ano? Grabe. Wala ito sa news, eh. Pero confirmed ito, ha? In Pasay, 132. In Laguna, 128. Cavite, 291. Montilupa, 110. Paranaque, 97. Marikina, 85. Antipolo, 10. Although alam ko, may nadagdag ng dalawa dito. Manila, 127. Makati, 19. Quezon City, 306. Bulacan, 38. Pampanga, 289. Pasig, where I live, 199. Zambales, 19. Batangas, 22. Pangasinan, 1,099. Mandaluyong, 286. My gosh! These are the people who have succumbed to the app called TikTok. Dumadami na po sila. Uh, it's really very alarming. Okay? So that's beatitude number two. Pwede kayong malibang doon, di ba? Mag-TikTok kayo. Beatitude number two. And if you also look at beatitudes number eight and nine, sabi doon, medyo hindi rin siya fit eh. It's close But they're not so much as a fit. Tingnan natin, no? Sabi doon, Blessed are those who are persecuted and blessed are those Blessed are you when people insult you. I get it. I understand. If you follow Jesus, you will get persecuted. But is it really a moral requirement to get persecution? To get people to insult you? Kasi kung requirement siya, aba eh, Punta, samahan nyo ako. Punta tayo sa Afghanistan and there in the middle of their capital in Kabul, doon tayo mag feast and we will shout out Jesus is Lord. That will make our lives very interesting and very short. The other five beatitudes, being meek, being merciful, hunger and thirst for righteousness, pure in heart, and become a peacemaker could be ethical standards. They would fit So, five of them would fit, but the other four, hindi. E parang hindi naman ata ganun magturo si Lord. Everything should fit. So, if they're not the nine commandments of Jesus, ano sila? Again, when reading the Bible, we always have to look at the context, the big picture. 
Sabi nga ng idol kong si Anthony Pangilinan, it's not the text, it's the context. It's not the note that you're so eager to play. It's the symphony that you want people to hear. Always remember this when you're reading the Bible. Very important ang context. Okay? If we look at who Jesus was talking to, who was his audience when he said these words, ayan, magkakaroon tayo ng linaw. Sino bang binibless niya sa kanyang pag-preach? The Sermon of the Mount starts in chapter 5. The answer to our question is found in the last verses of chapter 4. Ano bang sabi doon? News about him spread as far as Syria, and people soon began bringing to him all who were sick, and whatever their sickness or disease, or if they were demon-possessed or epileptic or paralyzed, he healed them all. Large crowds followed him wherever he went. Who were his audience? Diba? The sick, the demon-possessed, the lunatics, the epileptics, the paralyzed, the poor. Sino sila? These are the outcasts of society. And take note, in the last verse, it says they followed Jesus. Large crowd followed him wherever he went. Yung last line, diba? And when you go to chapter 5, before Jesus says the Beatitudes, Matthew says, Now when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on a mountainside and sat down. His disciples came to him and he began to teach them. Disciples daw. Sino sila? When there's a mention of disciples in the Bible, sino agad ang naisip mo? Do you think about the chosen 12, you would be right. But in this context, you would be wrong. We are only on chapter 5. The choosing of the 12 begins in chapter 10. So, sinong disciples ang sinasabi dito sa chapter 5? Ano ba ang ibig sabihin ng disciple? Di ba follower? Remember the last line? A large crowds followed him wherever he went. And that is our answer. This will give context to the whole passage. Ang mga kausap niya, yung mga outcasts ng society, ang message niya, you are blessed. Grabe, diba? And then you get to realize the Beatitudes weren't ethical standards. They weren't commandments. Instead, and I really believe this. The Beatitudes were God's VIP guest list. No? Invited to His upside-down kingdom. This is God's message of hope to all of you who are broken, to all of you who are hurting, to all of you who are suffering and in pain and marginalized. This is God's message of love for you. You are God's VIP. Iba ang measuring stick ni Lord when it comes to His kingdom. Tignan nyo, ah. You know, in those days, Israel was under the highly militarized Roman Empire. So sa mata ng mundo, sino ang mga blessed? Sila yung mga may connection sa Roman Empire. Yung mga may position, yung mga may authority. Yung mga may religious powers. Yung mga mayayaman. Question. After 2,000 years or in the present day, may nagbago ba? Parang wala naman. I mean, if you asked anybody kung sino sa tingin nila ang blessed, sino sa tingin sa sabihin nila, you would hear them say, mga artista, mga politicians, mga mayayaman. That's how we think, no? Sila blessed, ako hindi. And that's just BS. Ano ang BS? Sabay-sabay tayo. Sabihin natin, belief system. Okay? And this is what Jesus is trying to change. Here's the truth. The kingdom of the world values the powerful. But Jesus says His kingdom values 
the powerless. Sabi ni Jesus in Mark chapter 9, verse 35, Whoever wants to be first must take the last place and be the servant of everyone else. My dear friend, no matter how poor, how broken, how wounded, how insid- insignificant you think you are, you are important to this world. You have a purpose to fulfill. You're not being left behind. You're actually in God's VIP list. That's the good news. That's the truth. And if you start believing this truth, you will see you are truly blessed. And from this perspective, this new understanding, we can now proceed to look at the Beatitudes once again. I hope you were enlightened by this message. I pray that you never think of yourself as unworthy or unloved ever again because in God's eyes, you are a VIP. I pray that you're safe from the pandemic that is spreading and you're making use of this quarantine to have more quiet time with God and with your family. Thank you and God bless you. To start with the first beatitude, let me turn you over once again to our ever handsome, ever caring, ever loving feast builder, Brother Joel Saladar. Thank you so much, Brother Mon, for, for preaching the word to us, for sharing God's word to us. Friends, again, Jesus came for those who need Jesus. For, for those who need forgiveness, Jesus was there. For those who need His love and mercy, Jesus is there. For those who need G- salvation, Jesus is there. And this is my question. Do you have a need for Jesus in your life? Because if you have a need for Jesus, be reassured that Jesus came into this world just for you. The first, the first beatitude, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. If you're poor in spirit, God is saying you are blessed. If, if you're poor in spirit, God is saying the kingdom of heaven is for you. Last week, we've talked about the kingdom. And in fact, we de- defined what kingdom is all about. Diba? Hindi siya yung Netflix series na, na zombie apocalypse story of, of kingdom. Hindi siya yung Kingdom is not where power, where, where control is, is, is ruling. In, in God's definition of kingdom, anong sabi niya? Kingdom is a place where God's will is being followed. And, and let us talk about the first beatitude from that context. From, from the context of God's kingdom. Again, it is where God's will is being followed. Or, or, or sino ba? Let's define who is part of of God's kingdom. You know what? During that time, the, the Jews, the Romans, they, they measure, they define God's kingdom differently. Diba yung, we all know that the Jews, ang, ang, merong ano eh, may prophecy for them that a Messiah will come to, to save them. And, and their thinking was that, that the Messiah came for the Jews so that they will be rescued from the Roman Empire. So, so ang tingin nila, yung, yung kingdom that, that the Messiah will, will build is their kingdom and theirs alone. In the book of Matthew, let us start, ano? in the book of Matthew, sabi doon, poor in spirit. Blessed are the poor in spirit. But in the book of Luke, iba eh, may, nabawasan. Sabi sa book of, of Luke, pag binasa nyo, blessed are the poor. So, so nawala yung spirit. Isa, poor in spirit, yung isa, poor lang. So, so if, if you think about it, alin ba yung ano, alin ba yung mas tama sa kanilang dalawa? And then if we'll go back to that context again of, of that time, again, sabi ni Brother Mona, no, when we study the Bible, we, we need to study it based on its, in a lot of things. First is the context. Kailan sinulat? Para kanino sinulat? Ano yung sitwasyon nung isinusulat yung, yung word na yun? So, so, looking back at that time, again, di ba, yung context ng society during that time, when you say spiritually poor and you say materially poor, in fact, they are the same. Why? Because during that time, sa structure nila at that time, when you're materially poor, you also don't have a position in their religious structure. So, so in, in essence, ang sinasabi, when you're spiritually poor, you are also materially poor. Or vice versa, when you're materially poor, you are also spiritually poor. Are you getting what I'm saying? Kaya na in those times, yung mga Sadducees, remember the Sadducees, the high priest, 
dahil dahil nasa simbahan sila they are considered to be spiritually rich but but they are not just spiritually rich during that time they were also rich in society sila yung mga pare na nakatira sa mga sa mga magagandang mansion, malalaking mansion that they alam mo very privileged sila. Kung kung baga sa panahon ngayon sila yung mga naka-Armani, naka-Louis Vuitton, sila yung mga nagda-drive ng BMW, Rolls-Royce o ng 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 ng, ng Mercedes-Benz. Doon sa panahon nila sila yung mga yon. But but you know what for them to be able to maintain that that stature in society they were also considered, they were seen as the lapdogs of the Romans. Gusto nila kumawala sa mga Romans and yet, they were, di ba, yung affinity nila sa Romans. Why? So that they can keep their stature, their power. Now, going back, going back to how, di ba, remember when we were studying si, si John the Baptist, John was always compared to, to, the, to the high priest. He was always compared to the Sadducees and the Pharisees. And, and what one big difference, di ba, John had that humility. On the other hand, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, they had diba? What ha- lack of humility. Instead, they, they were so proud. They, they have pride in their hearts. Friends, again, just to be clear, uh, uh, the Messiah came to, to save. Sino ang sinisave niya? For, for, for the Jews, they were just thinking of themselves. Kami lang. Diba? Kaya yung mga ancient Jews at that time, for them, the Savior will save sila lang. Kaya nga, when, when Jesus started to teach this way, di ba, nung narinig nila yung sinabi ni Jesus when in the Sermon of the Mount, she said, Blessed are the poor. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Grabe, bigla silang nag-react. Hindi ito. Ito ba ito? Hindi, hindi sila. Amin niya, kami. Di ba? Kaya nga, they were doubting Jesus because to through Jesus, di ba, si Jesus, his definition of his BIP is very different. Kanina, pinag-usapan niya yan. Kanina, kay Brother Mon, he mentions the very important people to the Jews, to the high priests, to the Romans, the Pharisees. Ang tingin nila sila ang VIP. But when God spoke, when Jesus spoke, anong sabi niya? Blessed are the poor. To, to Jesus, He was defining His VIP. Diba? On, on another, another religious thinking that they have, if, if someone is poor, if someone is sick, He is not blessed. Again, when someone is poor, when someone is sick, he is not blessed. Hindi siya mabib blessed. For for them, for for the to, for the Pharisees, for the Jews, ang tingin nila pag mahirap ka, kasi pinaparusahan ka. Pag may sakit ka, pinaparusahan ka, curse ka. So so so, what was shocking to them was this this very radical teaching that Jesus was saying, "Blessed are the poor in spirit, for the kingdom of heaven is for them." To 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 the society at that time, this was very shocking. And Jesus is saying that the kingdom has room for those who are poor in spirit. Jesus is saying that his BIP are, are that the BIP in his kingdom are the poor in spirit, the 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 sick, the the the, the, the those who who don't have much in their lives. Friends, do you feel that way? Do you feel that you're poor materially? Do you? feel that you're poor in spirit? Do you think there are a lot of things that is missing and lacking in your life? Don't worry and listen to the reassurance of the Lord when He says, if you feel that way, you are my BIP. Sige nga, sabihin mo sa katabi mo, to Jesus, you are a BIP. Again, that is the first beatitude, that God's kingdom is for everyone, even for the unqualified, that, that his kingdom is for the broken, that his kingdom is for the hurting, that his kingdom is for the poor. God has opened his kingdom for everyone who needs Jesus in their lives. I, 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 as much as I would want to talk about all the other Beatitudes, this is the, this is the only Beatitude that we'll be talking about in, in this the, today. But I want to end. I want to end with one last, with one last point. If, if I will ask you, if I will ask you to choose, would you want to be rich or would you want to be poor? Yung totoo. If I will ask you, if you will be given a chance, would you want to be rich or would you want to be poor? Why am I saying this? Because you know what? Today, the world that we live in, nakakalungkot, but, but this is the truth. We are so obsessed with the question, who is the richest? Who is the most popular? Who is the most powerful? Who is the most beautiful? Who is the sexiest? Diba? We're so obsessed with fame, 
fortune with power. Alala ko nung high school ako yun eh, yung yung kantang I wanna be rich, di ba? We, we all would wanna be rich. Why? Because we feel that success is measured by how rich we are. Kaya nga for many, we have so much of affinity to the rich, to the famous, to the powerful. Diba? Ang dali natin i-idolize yung mga sikat, celebrities, yung mga athletes. We idolize them and we dream of becoming like them. Again, walang masama to be rich. But but the question is this, diba? In in today's world where, where success is, is measured by richness, by beauty, by material things, diba? Are, are we following to be in God's kingdom, we need to follow the will of God. And then God, when He measures success, do, do we have the same measure? Again, if, if this is the kind of measure that we will use to, to measure greatness, to measure success, to measure all these things, then, then two things, two things might, might happen to us. If we use the measuring stick of the world instead of the measuring stick of God, two things, two things that might happen to us. Number one, first, you will end up that you never measure up. Diba? You will never measure up. If you continue to measure how the world sees success is, you will never measure up. Why? Because in this world, success, definition of success, it keeps on changing. Diba? Tignan mo ha. Yung, yung L word. Kanina, binanggit ni Brother Mon yun eh. Yung ganyan, no? Yung L word crowd of Jesus. If you look at yourself, do you, do you belong to that L word? Do you belong to that L group? I mean, look at you now. Diba? Kahit naka work from home ka, at least you have a job. You perhaps you have a nice phone. Kaya ka nga nakakapanood ngayon ng FB Live eh kasi yung phone na meron ka could could connect to the internet. Yung phone na meron ka could could access could access delivery apps, order apps, movies, di ba? Netflix and all these things. Ibig sabihin, di ba? Or sige, tignan natin. Silipin mo lang yung ano, lagayan mo lang sapatos mo. Do you have a pair? Two, three? Parang yung taan ako ng asawa ko. <laughs> Six or more than 12 pairs of shoes. Do you have a roof over your head? In these times, were you able to, to to buy and stock food in in your refrigerators, in your pantry? Di ba? Di ba? Nakapag-panic buying ka ba o nag-panic ka lang? What, what, what am I trying to drive at? You know what? According to the global rich list, this is a study. Anyone, any household who earns at least 50,000 pesos a month is already on the top 30% of the world. Meaning to say, kapag ang sweldo ng household ng pamilya nyo ay 50,000, kasama na kayo sa mga who's who. Ah, ganun, ano? Why? Because 70% of the world earns below 50,000. 70% of the population of the world is poor. So technically, if you're in that 30%, then diba? you're, you're rich. Again, the metrics of the world, it's, it's very deceptive. Here is the problem. Here's the problem. If, if that is how we measure. If we measure based on money, if we measure based on success and material things. I say the problem is, it keeps changing. If that is our measure, it keeps changing. When you thought you made it, all of a sudden, the standards are raised up. Diba? Kung sa palagay mo, mayaman ka na kasi eto na, ganito na ang trabaho mo, ganito na ang position mo, then you'll realize, ay teka, merong mas kumikita na mas malaki sa akin, ay merong mas maganda ang position sa akin, ay meron yung kapitbahay ko, mas maganda yung bahay niya sa akin, ay yung office mate ko, mas maganda yung kotse niya sa akin, yung telepono ko, ay mas maganda, di ba? Tignan mo yung iPhone, tignan mo yung Samsung, di ba? Taon, 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 nagbabago, nagbabago, pamahal ng pamahal, paganda. Kapag naka iPhone 4 ka, tapos bigla nalabas iPhone 4S, 5S, 6S, 7S, ngayon, di ba? It keeps on changing. It keeps on changing. And what happens to you? You focus on, ay, kailangan makuha ko to, makuha ko to. And then you realize, di ba, you're always running after success. Bakit? Because you always fail to measure up. You always try to prove yourself. Again, at the end of the day, friends, someone will always be richer. Someone will always be better. Someone will always be prettier. Someone will always be sexier. Someone will always be stronger and younger than you. And you will always, you will always just try to prove yourself. But, but the question is this, do, do you need to prove yourself to the... Anong pakailan? May pakailan ba sila sa'yo? You always try to prove yourself to the people around you. May pakailan ba sila sa'yo? I, I remember this interview with John Rockefeller. Since John Ra Rockefeller, he was he's one of the richest person in the U.S. at that time, in his time. 
And in fact, sabi sa kan- sabi, 1% diba, of the total economy of the US was John Rockefeller. Ganun siya kayaman. And he was asked, he was asked a question. Sabi sa kanya ng isang journalist, how much money is enough? The, the question is, how much money? Sabi niya, John, how much money would you consider is enough? And Rockefeller's answer was this. A little more. Just a little more. Why? Because the truth is this. If it's money that is your standard, if it's the standard of your success is material things, it will never be enough. But on, on the contrary, in God's kingdom, alam mo yung God's kingdom, the, the title of this talk is Upside Down Kingdom. I, I want you to look at this triangle. And I want you to imagine... I want you to imagine this this triangle as as God's kingdom, di ba? In in today's world, the measuring stick is ano eh, di ba? Parang yung yung mayayaman ang konti lang nila eh. Tapos sila, sila yung nandiyan. But, but in God's kingdom baliktad eh. Di ba? Sa 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 sa, sa, sa kaharian ng Diyos baliktad, di ba? Sino ang priority? Those who have the least, the poor in spirit, the hurting, the broken, they are the VIPs in God's kingdom. Again, that 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 L letter, that the crowd with, with the giant L on their foreheads, if this world says losers in, in God's kingdom, that letter L is not loser. It means loved. In God's kingdom, you are always worthy. In God's kingdom, you are always a winner. Friends, that is why I urge you, I encourage you, do not use the measuring stick of this word, but instead use God's measuring stick. Ask me why? Because if you do, if you start to use the measuring stick of Jesus, then you will start to compare yourself with others. You will stop feeling insecure. You will stop trying to prove yourself. Why? Because in God's kingdom, you don't need to prove yourself anymore. Because in God's kingdom, you already are a BIP. Sabi nga doon sa, ano, ano, sa greatest showman kasi, ano sabi doon? You will never be enough. Never, never, never enough. Diba? Never, never. But in God's kingdom, you are always enough. In fact, you are more than enough because God says you are loved. God says you are loved. God says you are accepted. God says you are more than enough. Friends, know this. In, 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 if you're feeling broken, if you're feeling unworthy, God has already made you worthy by His love. Again, that's the first thing. If, if you always measure success by this world's measure, then you will never measure up. But, but the second thing that can happen to you, if, if you remain that way, the second thing is you might be rude to God's BIPs. Why? If, if you use the world's measuring stick to, to measure others, you, you will be tempted to be unfair. You, you will be unjust. You will be rude. You will be rude to these people. Diba madalas, when, when you use God's, when, when you use God's measuring stick and you stop looking down at yourself and you, you what happens? Diba you also stop looking down at others. Friends, I have a great news for you. Ask me what? Diba? You, you are God's beloved. You are God's chosen. God sees you as somebody who's more than enough. Kaya alam, meron pa ako isang great news sa'yo. Tanungin niyo ako ano. Hindi lang ikaw. Even the people around you, they are more than enough. When when you start to, to shift how you measure people, when you measure people not with, with the eyes of this world, but with the eyes of God, you will treat every person with, with more respect and dignity. Why? Because you realize that every person around you, no matter how wounded or broken or poor, is a BIP in God's kingdom, just as you are. That is why, alam mo, in the Bible, I want to end with, with this passage coming from James. So, see, James said this in, in James 2, chapter 2, verses 2 to 4. Anong sabi niya? For example, suppose someone comes into your meeting dressed in fancy clothes and expensive jewelry and another comes in who is poor and dressed in dirty clothes. If you give special attention and good seat to the rich person, but you say to the poor one, you, are, you cannot stand over there or else sit down on the floor. Well, doesn't this discrimination show that your judgments are guided by evil motives? See, see, see. James in this story is differentiating, diba? The, the rich and the 
the poor and how do we relate to that diba? subconsciously subconsciously because we use the world the world's measuring stick what happens we, we tend to favor and give more attention to someone who is beautiful dressed up diba pag may pumasok sa isang room diba sinong nakakakuha ng attention mo yung yung maganda o yung pangit yung bihis na bihis o yung hindi maganda ang bihis diba and and what happens we we become ano yan tayo minsan nagiging mata pobre tayo when we measure the world by 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 richness by success and all nagiging ano eh iba yung tingin natin sa tao but in the next verse in 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 verse 5 si James would give us would give us and show us how do we treat the poor and powerless with equal dignity. Kaya in James 2 to 5, ano sabi niya? Listen to me, dear brothers and sisters. Hasn't God chosen the poor in this world to be rich in faith? Aren't they the one who will inherit the kingdom he promised to those who love him? James is echoing what the message of today is telling us. That, that blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. I guess, I believe in ending today, this word is encouraging us to see others the way God is seeing them. To see ourselves the way God is seeing us. If, if we'll always measure our, ourselves towards the measure of the world, we will always feel inadequate. We will always feel na hindi tayo sapat, na may kulang sa atin, na hindi tayo karapat dapat. But, but today, this is my encouragement to you. Let's, let's, let's always choose to see others the way God sees them. Ako, in, in my life, I, I try my best to treat every person with equal dignity. I try my best to, to see everyone equally. Kung paano mo titignan yung mayaman, yung mahirap, we're all the same. Why? Because God loves us. He, his love for us is equal. He sees us. He doesn't see us differently. He sees us the same. We are loved. We are forgiven. You know what? Sometimes it's very difficult. Sometimes I lose. Sometimes I win in, in that, you know, in that battle. But, but I will keep on struggling. I will keep on struggling to, to do that. Why? Because I have decided to use God's measuring stick. I have decided to see the kingdom the way God sees the kingdom. His upside down kingdom. Friends, when you look out into the world, you will always see someone better, richer, more powerful. But instead of looking at them and envying them, why not look at the less privileged people? Sometimes, lagi lang tayo nakatingin sa taas. Let's, let's look down. But and when we see these people, kasi minsan lang we focus too much on what's missing and lacking in our lives. Pero di ba, when, when you see the less privileged people, you start to realize how blessed you are. When, when you look at these less privileged people and see how God has been blessing you, then you will have more compassion in your heart. You will start to be grateful knowing that wherever you are now, ano man ang sitwasyon mo ngayon, God has blessed you with so many things. That there are a lot of things that you can be grateful for. But on the other hand, I want you to find hope. If you feel that you are underprivileged, if you feel that you are unqualified, if you feel that you are unworthy, I want you to know that you are God's VIP in His kingdom. Today, the challenge is, is how do we see the world? How do we see the people that God has given into our lives? Friends, I want to end by saying this again. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Today, if you feel that there is something missing and lacking in your life, know that God's kingdom is for you. The very reason why Jesus came down here on earth is for you. Ikaw ang dahilan kung bakit narito si Jesus. If, if you need God into your life, if you need Jesus in your life, know that He is here and He is for you. I want to, to lead you into prayer that, that today that God will, will change our hearts, that, that God will, will speak to our hearts. Father, we thank you for, for blessing us with your word. We thank you for, for reminding us that no matter how, how poor, how inadequate, how wounded, how hurting we are, Lord, you are there for us. That, that you are our, that you are our strength that you are that you will bless us O Lord Jesus father we pray and that, that we may be able to rise up to the challenge to, to stop using the measure of this world and to start using your very eyes and Lord God the same way the same way that, that you see 
the same way that you look at us when you look at us with love with, with grace with goodness oh lord god that is our prayer that when we look at other people especially those who are underprivileged father may we love them may we serve them the way you are loving us and serving us in jesus name we pray amen hallelujah brothers and sisters let's just worship god at this moment Lord God, we just want to thank you for even though sometimes we feel like we're unworthy, that we don't deserve your love, Lord God. You keep proving us wrong. Hallelujah. <laughs> okay. All right. It's the rolling. Hallelujah, Father. At this moment, we just want to worship you, Lord God. We just want to thank you, Lord God. Because even though sometimes we feel like